Suzanne, thanks for coming to see us at eCancer TV because this whole question of anti-PD mm -hmm. uh, drugs and looking at uh, some of the quite sophisticated processes going on inside cancer cells and how they affect the environment, mm -hmm. you've been using nivolumab. What were you doing with it and in which setting and why? What we're reporting on here at ASCO is uh, the results of a phase one trial of nivolumab uh, with expansion cohorts. So it's actually a fairly large trial of about 300 patients patients with five different kinds of, of cancer, um, including melanoma, lung cancer, kidney cancer, colorectal and prostate cancer. And the idea of the trial uh, was to block a molecule that we call an immune checkpoint, in this case program death one, PD-1, uh, in order to reactivate immune uh, responses against cancer. And in fact, the, the tumor is holding the body's immune systems in check. Exactly and right. You're removing that hold. Mm -hmm. So it's along the same lines as, as what has been discussed before for anti-CTLA-4 or ipilimumab, which was approved two years ago in the United States for a treatment of patients with advanced melanoma. Uh, this study goes beyond that to examine patients with other kinds of cancers, and what we found were substantial response rates in lung cancer and kidney as well as melanoma. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask you about that, but could you tell me about the study, what, what you did and what sort of patients you had? Right. So these were all patients who had had at least one prior uh, treatment for their cancer, but about half of all the patients on the trial had had three or more prior systemic treatments for their cancer. So they were heavily pretreated patient population uh, who came onto the study which which was designed to test the safety and tolerability of nivolumab and so early on in the trial uh, as per standard phase one trials they were recruited in small groups of patients at, at at increasing dose levels we did not find a maximum tolerated dose or dose limiting toxicity and then at that point uh, additional uh, patients were enrolled to learn more about the safety profile but also to learn something about the efficacy of the drug. Now at this stage is this all comers or are there any particular types of uh, patient or, or characteristics that you can look for that would be more susceptible to inhibition of PD-1? Mm -hmm. Well, in order to be eligible for this trial, you had to have one of the five different kinds of cancers that I mentioned, uh, but they were it's not really selected. Generous. Yeah, they, they were not selected for any other kind of marker. So uh, the purpose of the trial was to, to learn about the, the profile of the drug in terms of activity and safety and to explore potential molecular markers that might allow us to select patients most likely to respond. Now you described the results as, as quite interesting, quite good. What, what actually, what are the data? Well, what we're reporting on here are not only the objective response rates, meaning a traditional resist criteria, complete or partial regressions, but also the durability of those responses, the fact that those responses can persist even after the drug is discontinued and the patient is, is simply observed and the fact that those responses are associated with what appears to be favorable overall survivals. Now, this was not a randomized study, and so, so really, in order to say anything about um, an overall survival benefit, uh, we will need information that's going to come out of the randomized trials that have already been started. But, but yeah, I think we can still learn a lot from this, this large uh, study that we're discussing uh, here at ASCO. One of the thoughts that's floating to the top in use of checkpoint inhibition is that you could use it as part of a strategy, and you can actually add other therapies to it Correct. to complete the process. Mm -hmm. how, how are you feeling about all this at the moment? We, uh, as a field, we think this is the next frontier. I mean, uh, on the one hand, we're very encouraged about the fact that we can see the regression of advanced uh, solid tumors uh, with monotherapy with nivolumab. And we're also extremely encouraged that we're not just seeing this with nivolumab, but also the other drugs that are being discussed at the uh, conference from a variety of different companies that either target PD-1 or target its major ligand PD-L1. So a very consistent theme is developing that this pathway, the PD-1 pathway, is important for cancer. So how do we then go to the next level? Uh, we're helping a certain percentage of patients. We need to help more. Uh, everything that we know from laboratory studies says that combination therapies are going to be the way to go. Can you incorporate this knowledge into an algorithm that the everyday doctor can use and simply plug in and individualize therapy? Uh, I think that um, 
you know, really this needs to be studied in a systematic way uh, based on solid evidence from the laboratory. Uh, rather than picking and choosing, you know, drugs of convenience and, and so forth, I think but are, we... Are you at the stage where you've got enough knowledge to think about having a, an individualized treatment based on the molecular features you find in the particular uh, pan-cancer effects like mm -hmm. Checkpoint? I, I don't think we're there yet. So I think we're on the way. I think we have some interesting leads, but it requires a lot more study. And, and this is what we, we are doing now in the next generation of clinical trials. And how would you summarize what doctors should be making of nivolumab and these results you're quoting here at ASCO? I think that these um, are still early results, but that um, there is reason for a lot of optimism that this kind of approach, uh, modulating immune responses against cancer uh, in an outpatient regimen that seems to be fairly well tolerated, um, this kind of approach is, is here to stay and um, the, the next uh, level now is going to be to increase the efficacy by uh, adding other drugs to the regimen. Suzanne, thanks for joining us on eCancer TV. My pleasure.